Hey everybody, it's Zach from My Shire Farm. I am back again with another video to help you on your journey with Caternix quail and becoming more self-sufficient. Today we're gonna to talk about feed. Um, we have spent the past couple of months um, talking with experts in their field and I'm going to give you my notes with that um, as far as the questions that we've asked um, the answers that they've given. Uh, we're gonna, we've customized our feed and we're gonna give you those numbers. We're gonna give you the um, percentages that they recommend that you feed your quail. And some of them are uh, understandable. I've known this for a while and some of them kind of surprise me. So I hope that it surprises you and it helps you on your journey. Now, if you have questions, feel free to comment below. I will be happy to try to help you in that way. Uh, I'm doing my best to keep up with comments on there. Uh, but remember, every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we go live right here on our YouTube channel, My Shire Farm, uh, and we do a live question and answer. We have a ton of fun. Uh, we do a lot of different stuff on there, and I would love to see you on there. Uh, but you can feel free to comment below if you can't make it. Uh, if you can, I would greatly appreciate it if you could support this channel by just hitting that like button uh, and subscribing because we've got a lot of great videos coming your way. Um, but uh, I would greatly appreciate if you could subscribe and uh, at least like the video because we are doing a lot of research and spending a lot of time to try to give you the information uh, for you to see, be successful in your Caternix quail journey. Now, enough of my rambling. Let's get to some uh, information concerning feed. Now, the first thing that we talked about, because like I said, we, we did, we, we spoke with and have talked to experts in the field from nutritional experts with animals, nutritional experts with uh, humans. We've talked to uh, vets. We've talked to um, PhD doctors that specialize in, in formulating and creating a feed for animals. And uh, we've had a lot of great information and you don't know what you don't know until you know, right? Well, the longer we do this, hopefully the better we get at it. That is the, the goal anyway, right? I hope we're doing that. Uh, and we've done this before uh, years ago, um, but we've learned a lot since then. We've experienced a lot since then. And so we had better questions to ask them, uh, which I think benefits us. And hopefully in this video, it'll benefit you as well. Um, so the one thing that we all talked about first and foremost was what is a Caternix? Well, we all agreed that Caternix is a game bird, but it's a different type of game bird. Most game birds are bred to be flighty. Uh, they're bred to be wild. Uh, they're bred for specific feather patterns and color patterns and brightness and, you know, ornamental quail and things like that. Bob whites are more flighty and you want them lean. Um, but Caternix, Caternix is specifically bred for meat and egg production, for self-sufficient use. That's what they're bred for. Uh, so it's a little bit different. So we all agreed on that. The second thing that we all agreed on was that you don't need to overthink it. So we did, we did overthink it. But that is because we ship over a half a million eggs a year all over the U.S. Uh, and we ship thousands of live birds every year um, all over the U.S. And so we want to give our customers the best possible quality that we can possibly give them. Uh, so if we were just using quail for self-sufficient use for our family, we would not go to this extreme. So keep that in mind. I'm going to give you... Um, ranges on what you're looking for. But remember, Caternix quail are very easy and very simple. Do not overthink it. They will be fine on a chicken feed. They will be fine on a turkey feed. They will be fine on a game bird feed. They would be fine on an all-purpose feed as long as the ranges matches, matches up. So we will give you the ranges and preferred uh, percentages that you want to be at but do not overthink it. If you are just raising uh, a few quail to support your family, then I will give you that information as well. Don't overthink it. I see way too many people 
just going way overboard when it's not necessary. Uh, if you are selling quail uh, and things like that and you want a higher quality, then this video is for you as well. Uh, I spent the last five minutes building this video up, so I better get to the numbers for you uh, before I lose your interest, right? So we'll start with the starter grower. We're using what's called a wild flush. Um, it is a 28% starter crumble. We do recommend a crumble. Well, they recommend a crumble for uh, Coturnix quail. Um, and the ranges that they use is between 25 and 32% protein for uh, the best results, sorry, for the best results for Coturnix quail. I'm going to say that again because I kind of screwed all that up and I apologize. But they recommend for best results, 25 to 32% protein for starter grower Coturnix quail. They recommend, which I thought this was interesting, uh, that you use a starter grower from zero to eight weeks old. I thought that they would have said 10, um, but they did not. So from zero to eight weeks, they recommend a 25 to 32% protein starter crumble. Again, they can use a crumble, you can use a pellet, you can use a mesh, um, but crumble is ideal for Coturnix quail. We are using a 28%. Uh, the next percentage is crude fat. Their uh, recommendation is between two and a half to three and a half percent on crude fat. Um, ours is a 3%. Uh, their crude fiber, um, they did not really have a minimum on, but they recommended that you do not go over 8%. Um, they explained it, but I still couldn't figure it out, so just don't go over 8%. Um, and uh, we use a 6%. Uh, the calcium range for starter growers. This is only from zero to eight weeks old. Uh, the calcium ranges should, they recommend 0.75% to 2%. Uh, and we are using a minimum of one and a maximum of one and a half. Um, our phosphorus, uh, they recommend a 0.5 to 1%. We're using a 0.9. Uh, and the salt intake uh, which is NACI. Uh, the minimums they recommend is be between 0.25 and 1%, and ours is a 0.25 to 0.2 or 0.75. Sorry. Um, so, long story short, if you're just raising meat and eggs for your family, don't overthink it. Really, what you want to do is uh, between a 25 and 32% protein. Um, for the first eight weeks. Uh, crumble is preferred, but you can use a pellet, they have said. Uh, you can use a mesh. Um, you do not, they do not recommend that you um, fine crumble it. They don't recommend that you blend it. Um, and, uh, and again, uh, that is just what they recommend and they are much smarter than I. From the beginning of week eight, to the end of week eight, they recommend that you feed them uh, twice a day. First with the starter grow or crumble, that is between 25 and 32%, and uh, a second time with the layer breeder, which should be separate. Um, and uh, they recommend between a 17 and 22% protein, uh, which I also thought was very interesting. Um, and we are now using a 20% Coturnix layer breeder crumble. They also recommend a crumble for your breeders as well. Uh, I will actually show you this here. I brought the uh, feed thing on it. Um, so we are getting it from Klombach. They have been extremely helpful with this. Uh, again, it's a 20% Coturnix layer breeder. Um, it is custom made, so they are not selling this right now. We are selling it uh, for local pickup and things like that to help you. Um, but uh, I am still trying to get them to uh, mass produce it, but right now they are not. Um, but they recommend between 17 and 23% protein. Um, the crude fat, they recommend between two and a half and three and a half percent. 
we are doing a 3.2. Um, so that really doesn't change too much. The fiber should stay the same. They recommended that the fiber completely stay the same, uh, which is a max of 8%. Uh, you don't want to go over that. Uh, and we are doing a 6%. Uh, and then the calcium minimum and maximum, they recommend, <clears throat> I'm sorry, they recommend a two to three and a half percent calcium intake. Um, we are using a two and a two and a quarter to a three and a quarter uh, calcium. The phosphorus, phosphorus uh, needs to lower. Uh, they recommend uh, between 0.4 and 0.7 uh, percent phosphorus. We're using a 0.61. And the salt intake, which again is NACI, um, the minimum and maximum, they recommend be between 0.1 and 0.8, and we are using a 0.1 to a 0.6. Uh, again, it is a crumble all the way around. I know that that was a lot of information. And for those of you that are just raising meat and eggs for yourself, um, don't overthink it at all. I gave you a ton of information. You do not have to match that at all. Uh, there are ranges for a reason, um, but mainly uh, you wanna look for between a 25 and 30% uh, protein for the first eight weeks. After that, uh, you wanna use a uh, 17 to 22 percent uh, protein and then you want the um, the calcium to increase and you want your fiber uh, to maintain the same uh, and uh, and things like that but I hope that that helps um, again they'll use a pellet they'll use a mesh they'll use a crumble crumble is recommended these are all just recommended things but do not overthink it. For those of you that are selling chicks and selling eggs, um, I really trust the people that we spoke with because they are much smarter than I uh, when it comes to all of this and probably in every other category. And uh, they, they spent a lot of time with us and uh, did a fantastic job. So we are now customizing our feed through Klombach uh, and I'm very happy with the results, very happy with the results. Um, and I hope that that helped. So, uh, again, if that helps, um, please support the channel by just hitting that like button and subscribing. I've got a lot of great videos coming your way. And uh, remember, join us every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for our live question and answer. Hopefully, I'll see you in the comments. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you next time.